So, my name is Ezra and this is Jason. Definitely want to have us on a first name basis because we're such a small group, we can be fairly intimate, which is great. Um, I do want to take a moment to do two things. One, if you have a do digital doohickey of any kind that makes noise, i.e. a cell phone, a pager, or for those of us who remember, a fax machine, please silence oh, them. Yeah. <laughs> The second thing I want to do is say a big thank you to Jessica Ransom and the Cultural Council because they are pivotal in helping cultivate arts here in the Palm Beaches, which to me is something that's very dear and close to my heart. It's um, <clears throat> a good friend of mine once introduced me to a group of artists and said, you know, here is another generous artist. And to me that's so, such an important part of anyone's art practice is that they are a artist because as artists we're going to have so many things and trials that we push up against guaranteed that if we band together then essentially everything becomes much much easier so even this talk for us is very much about helping other artists and with that I do want to introduce also Renee Phillips who is a, um, a very talented artist who's also here in our audience who it has recently shifted or in part, has incorporated NFTs into her practice. So the immediacy of her experience of minting NFTs, we'll get to what minting is and that sort of thing in a minute, um, is vital. You know, anytime you're in the midst of doing a thing, it's easier to then say, oh, I know how to do this and I can share that experience with other people to help advise them. So Renee is a very good person for that. She's also very enthusiastic about um, kind of the current climate and what's going on with NFT. So I thought we would start with essentially explaining what an NFT is. And I'm going to start by using an example. Um, again, I'm going to call somebody from the audience to an extent, and that is Ellie Shore. She doesn't know doing this yet. Um, she's also, here we go again, a, a generous artist in that she runs a series of art talks large, largely based out of the armory. And that is a, an incredible resource in that individual artists can come and talk about their art practice. And I call their practice the same way a, a doctor or someone practice. It's not practice as in, I'm learning how to do this, even though that is always a part of it. She invites now. So you get a in-depth understanding of what that artist's practice is about. But she's also a photographer. So if she takes a photograph, a digital photograph, if she makes a photograph and say the gentleman sitting next to her says, I like that photograph, I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. You know, and she says, well that's quite a bargain, but okay. Mm -hmm. And this is a digital photograph, mind you. And then he in turn sells it to you, say a few days later, a month later, for say two hundred dollars or four hundred dollars. And then you sit on it for a month or two, mm -hmm. or however long, and it suddenly increases the value considerably. If you then sell that, say you sell it at Sotheby's or some sort of interesting auction for $50,000. $100, dollars $50,000, you were smart in making an intelligent investment. Oh, I'm living in fantasy land. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so say it's $5,000. Not so much in the NFT space, it does right. happen. It happens all the time. That's what's interesting. But, of course, the individual artist in the beginning didn't see any of that. Yeah. And the problem with that is in, with, it, that's traditionally how it's been, where an individual artist or you know, these kinds of things, you can license an image for use in a periodical or a magazine or something like that. And the movie industry, Actors, directors, producers receive residuals whenever their film is shown. Um, the music industry, the same kind of thing. But for a, a visual artist, that doesn't really happen. Right. So there's, a, there's, there's kind of a crux that also creates so much enthusiasm for NFTs, because that's one of the promises promise, and one of the premises upon which this whole thing is kind of grounded. The other thing it does for you as the collector that is really, really is that now you can look back and see that your asset has increased in value because you won't be able to tell exactly who those other people are in what, what they call the blockchain, right. essentially. And so everything is, 
is stored on the blockchain, there's a way in which you can tell what that other individual has collected. And there's a way in which you can actually tell who they are. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but in general, it's anonymous. But you know and you can see over time that it has increased in value. So for you, that's perfect. That's great. That's what you want as a collector. So as a collector, that's, that's one of the big value adds or pluses of being in an NFT market space. Then we'll get a little more technical on what actually NFT stands for and means. Yes, actually, I mean, it could be technical, but it's quite simple. Um, like, NFT is just an acronym for non-fungible tokens. You will be asking, like, what is fungible? Well, um, a good example is uh, a dollar bill. A uh, dollar bill will retain its value. It will be a dollar. It will be worth the same uh, here than across the state. And either any dollar will be worth the same. But when it's non-fungible, means that it's not interchangeable. That's what pretty much the word fungible means. It's non-fungible, meaning that it cannot be interchanged with anything else because there is no other thing like it. For example, a Rothko painting or, or a Dali painting, right? That's just one of those, the original one. And then there are many copies of it, but they don't hold as much value. The word token in here comes uh, more of a proxy, uh, like uh, something that stands for. So in, in, in talking about digitally, it's this image that stands for the work of art or a digital file that stands for the work of art, in, in this case, work of art, but it could be anything that is digital as well. It could be a house, it could be you know, a land, property, uh, anything that is certified digitally. So um, NFT pretty much uh, can be implemented in any uh, aspect of our lives as long as it's digitally manipulated or, or it's uh, transfer, transferable in that case. <coughs> um, Transferable from one individual to another, or yes, you could. Yeah. You, I can donate it. I can trade it. Right. I can sell right. it. Uh, so as long as it changes from one person to the other, uh, that's where the transaction is done. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it art. It's been been used uh, for a long period of time. For some reason. Just Eventually, uh, art made it popular, uh, but um, like I said, it could be it could be anything digital, and uh, and the whole concept of it is just uh, having a rarity or uniqueness of that uh, digital file, which wasn't uh, something that could be done previously. Like you had a JPEG, and everybody can copy and paste it and share it. But, and there's the concept of uh, original, the original work, like which one is the original. And that's kind of all gone out the window in a sense. I remember. It's the original in that sense. And so, how is it accessed? If it's you know, if it's secure. Yes, that's a good question because that is a bit more into the technical part. Uh -huh. uh, you do need a digital wallet, and uh, through that digital wallet, you uh, lo load it up with the currency that you're going to use to purchase uh, your uh, your digital file, and you log into various uh, sites or platforms. And from there, you have an account, and with your wallet, you kind of log into your account, so nobody else can log into your account but yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you browse uh, the library of uh, artworks that you're interested mm -hmm. in, 
and you make a purchase or you make a bid. There are three ways to buy. You can either make a bid, you can buy now, meaning that whatever price is set, you can buy. It's kind of, uh, uh, not, not to downgrade it, but kind of eBay in a way. Yeah, yeah. You kind of either buy now or you make a bid. And then there's the other that you just trade or swap or don't need to work. Mm -hmm. On the bids, is it like eBay? So like say you bid on OpenSea and mm -hmm. you put your bid in and it goes till the end of the month. Now does that artist or whoever, you know, minted that project, do they get to choose, you know, say, oh, I don't want to sell it for that or does it automatically go to that higher bidder? Yes, that, and that's also a very good question because it does work a bit different than eBay in that sense. I can place an item on one of these uh, platforms for sale and uh, it could be there for a long period of time, doesn't, doesn't matter. I, I set up a price, uh, but you can bid below that price as well. And if I accept your lower bid, then that's what the collector pays for it. And do you accept it like at the end of the uh, whatever the date goes to, or can you accept it before that? You you can not accept it at all. It could the bid could be placed, and you can just wait on it for somebody to outbid that bidder, and that could extend you know for days or weeks. And there's also uh, a, some platforms have a like a timestamp that once the bid starts, you have I think 24 hours or so before the bids uh, make like uh, permanent. But in the, if in between those 24 hours somebody bids, the clock starts all over again. So you have 24 or more hours. Okay. Uh, and I've seen, for example, artists that get bid <laughs> after bids and they just are not happy with the offers, so they won't accept anything, even if time runs out. Mm -hmm. So you are kind of in control as well of your work. Uh, you decide who, who collects it. And, uh, and and what price you're willing to sell it for. So a couple of things that are happening here. One, definitely in a forum setting, so anytime somebody has a thought or a question, do just speak up, because this mm -hmm. is a conversation very easy to Thank do. You. Something else that you asked, in a way, is how do you access it? Yeah. And that's one of the big, big questions, is that if you have a platform, you can transfer it onto a wallet and put it onto another platform, but this, and this gets into ideas of like Web 2.0 and Web 3.0, where it was historically with Web 1.0, it was if something existed digitally, then there were a lot of us who would say, oh, then this is free information, this is yeah. free knowledge, mm -hmm. that it can be spread to everyone and they can be an exact duplicates. And that works, kind of. Um, for instance, in my car, I wanted to act more like a Tesla and drive itself. So I installed a little device that I had to pay for, but the software that runs it is open source. So it is, uh, there's a website called GitHub, if people don't know that and they wanna get technical on it, GitHub is a place where you can go and add to programs or if you've developed a program, you can share it. So they can, there are all these other um, programmers who are out there continually developing and people who are fans of, hey, let's make our car that's not designed to be a self-driving car to drive itself, mm -hmm. and that's free free forever. So then it, along comes Web 2.0, as they call it, which is essentially um, Web 1.0 was when you would have to use your computer to dial into a specific phone number to access a BBS board, then along came CompuServe and AOL, where you could dial up directly to them and then have access to a limited internet, so to speak. And it was almost in the days of pirate radio, where anyone who had the capacity to put up a website could. And it was easy. And there, with that then came a massive amount of information. And everyone sat around and said, whomever can figure out how to sort through this information, they're going to do really well. Mm -hmm. Google comes on the picture. Now Google is a verb. I mean, that's significant. That's not just, hey, here's market penetration and, and changing the whole landscape. It's a verb. Mm -hmm. So what that then means in terms of Web 2.0 is that a lot of these people who are into this idea of free information or free access to information, um, it kind of backlashes in that it's then controlled by larger corporate entities. And part of the promise of where this type of thing comes about is this idea of decentralizing the power structure, mm -hmm. hence Web 3.0. And then you can have, through crypto and through 
blockchain information, you can then share it more openly. There are a lot of problems with that, but to get back to your question, or your original um, ask on how do you access it, <clears throat> so not long ago, we all know that Facebook rebranded itself as Meta, mm -hmm. with the idea of, of taking advantage of this phrase, the metaverse, which is, was kind of a pseudo-science fiction popular word to refer to the universe is much bigger than we give it credit for and, and the implementation of virtual. Um, I don't know if most if people have seen the film Ready Player One, <laughs> Steven Spielberg film. Yeah. In that, it, for those who haven't seen, seen it, there's a character who spends most of his time, or all of his time, in a virtual world wearing virtual reality goggles. And part of the premise of it is that you can visit different virtual worlds and that you can take your full avatar plus any of the things, the objects, the digital things that exist only digitally with you. And we can't do that yet. If you have a digital device in, um, I'm gonna use the gaming analogy, but in the gaming environment, if, you, if kids work hard to gain some sort of special thing, mm -hmm. say it's a flaming sword or a gun that does something useful, I don't know what, um, they can't take that with them to another one. And that's kind of the platform that we're, we're working with right now, mm -hmm. in a way. So you have these digital assets, in this case, largely art. Um, and there's a question, OK, where can you take it? And as the future moves forward, as we have more augmented reality, as more we spend more screen time and more in this hyper-visual world, that's going to become more and more relevant. And then specifically with that is who owns each one of those assets. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you want to have they want to be yours as you move with them. So that's it's an exciting time, but it, there's also a lot of ambiguity in there. Yeah. And there's a pushback of saying no, we don't want Facebook to come in and sweep the whole thing and then control it. But on the other hand, what's currently happening with the latest development of supposed Web 3.0 and augmented reality and virtual reality is that DARPA and the military. They're the ones pushing the technology right now. Facebook acquired Oculus in like 2014, I think it was. That's a long time ago in technology world, and not much has happened. So the Air Force and the Navy now use, uh, it's essentially an enhanced flight simulator, where as a pilot is flying, they experience their G-forces, and they're in a virtual dogfight. And to them, it looks and feels totally real. So that technology eventually will trickle down and become more consumer grade, or it's elements of it. So that's exciting, but it's antithetical to this idea of web 3.0 and you know, decentralized, all that sort of thing. So the big push with that, in part with NFTs, is that we have an opportunity, especially as artists and collectors, if we create a commodity exchange, but also then have the vision of individual artists pushing that forefront, it's something really exciting, you know, that people have been excited about for a long time, but haven't necessarily known how to do or have, having, haven't had the, a structure to support. Yeah. So everybody's really excited about that. Yeah. I start talking quickly because I get excited about this. And, uh, and, 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 and no that's you, quest. Oh, sorry. And you, you've touched on something. It's, the NFT space is really, it's been around for a while, but it's still very complex to, to kind of navigate the water. So I'm going to be interested to hear how Renee has navigated it. Um, question, how, how does Ethereum play in all of this? Because you're, you're I'm on Coinbase, the yeah, yeah. environment. And from what I understand, once you get past everything, meaning you've, you know, you've, um, Loaded your wallet, you go on OpenSea or whatever platform you're going to be on. As it relates to the exchanging of the currency, it's only on Ethereum, or is that is there another space for that? S it, yeah, go, go for it. They are they are various spaces now. It it started mostly because of DeFi. It's called decentralized finance, mm -hmm. uh, and that was Ethereum was the currency of choice used at the beginning. But uh, at least three more, uh, ADA, which is uh, uh, founded by Cardano, uh, Tesos, and Solana, uh, are all uh, 
have their own NFT platforms and they use their currency as well with much more affordable gas fees. Mm -hmm. Gas fees are the, what you pay for the transaction. Like if you want to transfer money from one bank to the other, they charge you for that transaction. Uh, and the competition has been mostly on lowering those prices and also on the impact it has on our environment. So all these that I mentioned are proof of work, I mean proof of stake, meaning that they don't need like hungry power, you know, power hungry uh, 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 machines to produce the currency. Because they're all mined, they, there's, it's like digging gold out of the earth kind of in a sense. So those names you mentioned are alternate currencies? <coughs> not alternate because you can use either uh, more like newer uh, upcoming they're making some kind of space for themselves and uh, a lot of people are also trying to more conscious about the impact that these uh, other the, uh, these other currencies have on the environment trying to get get on platforms that are uh, less destructive yes. And, and, and Ethereum eventually is heading down that path as well, but it's been five years in the wait, and they always say they're gonna do it, and they keep postponing it. But eventually, they will go into this proof of stake concept, which is ninety nine point nine percent more efficient and less destructive than Ethereum is at the moment, or Bitcoin, which is the most well known currency of them all. But. Um, okay. um might not be yeah, sorry. I don't know if I answered. <coughs> you, you answered one follow-up. Should sorry. one uh, copyright their, their digital art, their digital work? That's a good question. Um, and I would think under, I'm not, a intellectual, I'm not an IP lawyer, an intellectual property lawyer, but as far as I know, once it is technically created, you then hold the copyright. And I say that with hesitation because that's, you actually bring up, that's a huge can of worms. For instance, um, we'll jump ahead a little bit, but this, this is a, um, a series of 10,000, one of 10,000 different types of NFTs that are, uh, it's called a generative art, sort of, it's a loose term, in that each of the elements of this image, for instance, the hat, the color of the fur, the sweater, the, the kazoo, Whatever the, the earring, each of those and the color of the background are determined by a computer. And different ones have, <coughs> so if you as a model or as a designer then say, I'm going to make these things called Board Ape. These are images from uh, Board Ape Yacht Club, it's called. So they make 10,000 of these. It doesn't have anything to do with boats, but it lends incredible exclusi exclusivity. And part of that is the rarity of it. And as you know, people like to collect rare things because it's cool and social. We'll get to that too. Um, but going back to the generative aspect of this, so each one of those elements can be randomly controlled by the computer. The, the computer says, for instance, um, the gold-colored fur is extremely rare in this. So whomever owns this, even though this particular one, which is the number 8,166, I think, is um, only rated as the 17th most rare combination of elements. This just recently sold at Sotheby's for, was it 84 million? <laughs> and originally, and it's owned by a guy that has uh, 74 different versions of these things. And it, it's seen it exchange quite a few times. So the fact that Sotheby's is coming in to say, hey, this is viable art, this is actually something, and it's a tradable commodity, kind of upsets the market. In terms of market, what we're seeing right now in the last week, week and a half, you know, I don't know if we're having a major adjustment from the ramp up in 2000, 2001, or if, if this is going to stabilize, or if this is going down, or if it's going to continue to go down. But what a lot of NFT artists and digital artists are doing is taking advantage of that because then that means your gas fee that's not directly tied to a dollar that you're going to either pay through ethereum or bitcoin is much less so 
for instance, I have a few art artists who, whom I follow on some different platforms, and every time they mint something, I get an email. Mint means they put it up on their, on their platform that they like. So I get an email, and my email box has been flooded with all these artists saying, oh my goodness, everything is super cheap right now. I better get busy and get my work out there. Um, in relation to copyright, so these are facing to the right. There are two versions of this that look an awful lot like it, but they're facing to the left. And that was a group coming out and saying, this is ridiculous that these things are so valuable. So they made these fake apes. And the fake ones, people who didn't know, would log on and say, oh, there's an ape. It's a tenth of the price. I'm going to buy it. And then they freak out and say, wait a minute, I just bought a forgery. No, technically, it's not a forgery. It's a commentary on this other thing. And since then, those, the two major ones have actually been shut down. But that happens all the time. These kind of things, um, Twitter, as we were speaking of before, of how to cross-platform to an extent, Twitter was really, really smart in that they came out and said, hey, you can use an NFT as your, um, your little profile picture as your avatar, so to speak. So that increased in popularity, because then you'd look and say, wow, he's got, he's got one of those ape things. I want one of those ape things. You know, it, it does all of that. Which is interesting, and explains a lot of the, the explosion of these, they're not that interesting in terms of being art, but they're huge because of the sociability of them. Yeah. You know, if we can, if you look at it and say, hey, that's really cool, um, you know, for those of us that are into computer graphics and those sorts of things, video game Minecraft, mm -hmm. it's a terrible video game. It's <laughs> boring as all get out. Kids love it. Why? Because they can be on the phone and play with their kid, their friends, and they can see their friends in the virtual <coughs> environment. So it's the sociability of it. Mm -hmm. And that's often so frequently kind of an underestimated power of these types of things, of NFTs. And that, that's what I think we think uh, it's going to be head, it's heading towards to that sociability aspect that absolutely mm -hmm. that now you can be on your phone on your computer and show to the person right next to you what you collect your taste in art mm -hmm. and um, and not only uh, to the person next to you but use it in your uh, profile and your uh, Instagram account or in your Facebook page or you know or just share a link to your collection or to somebody uh, in an email or right under your signature when you send an email there's your phone number your website and a link to my collection as well so it's very it's going to be hopefully it's going to become very accessible to share what's your passion what do you collect what are your interests which um, which oh, quick thing which, which works in part of the humor of that also there was a comedian just recently who uh, came up with a video and in it he, he pointed out that you know, rap stars, rap videos, you see, you see their boats, you see their cars, you see their houses, you see all the cool stuff that money can buy. Now it's going to be, hey, check this out. Check this out. Here's my, makes a boring video. But, you know, if you just pay a bunch of money for a thing, you're going to show people. Yes. So this is all over, over my head. Um, so let's bring it back down. And I don't know, I don't want to, Thank I, you. I don't need to know, I, I don't want to know how the sausage is made. Uh, I love to get into the practical essence. So as a photographer, and, and I'm sorry, I'm really late, maybe you covered it. Um, um, but yeah, it, it, cryptocurrencies, all of that. But, it, but it's the future, that's why I'm here. So I want to learn something. Um, and you know, while I think it's ridiculous, you know, <laughs> what's going on there, perhaps there's, uh, there's, there's something here where I, I can uh, have another source of, uh, of income. So as a photographer, practical question. I create a photograph in my digital camera. I have an image, okay? I copyright it with the uh, US government. Um, I want to create an NFT. Um, how large of a, of a resolution do I, do I upload? What, what format do I upload? Do I still own the copyright? Does the person purchasing it owns the copyright? Can I still make prints from that original um, image and can I still sell them and in limited editions. Can the person who buys the NFT, can they go out and print? I mean, are they, you know, I mean, I, I, I wish we could get on the, uh, online here, but so once they own this NFT, 
Um, are they able to download a high resolution image and be able to make a print out of it? Are they allowed to do that? No, I can, but I can answer and all those questions. Yep. No, no, no. This no. Is good. This okay. Is good. <laughs> this is good. Yeah. Well, every platform has uh, a size that you are able to uh, upload an image. Uh, not like not a minimum, a minimum or a maximum. A maximum. Oh, okay. Okay. But as a photographer, me being a photographer as well, uh, understand your 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 doubts, right? In terms <laughs> of uh, this is sort of one of the things that got me started in NFTs at the beginning. Uh, you can upload the, if, remember what I said, well you weren't here, you said you were came in a little late, but, but I'm, I explained what NFT stands for and this, what this means is that whatever image you upload to the site is just, that, that's like separate from your print, unless you are in some other platforms, say Nifty Gateway or Known Origin, which are other two that lets you sell series of work, like one in five or one in 10 or as many as you want. And- So could you repeat that? You're going just a little quickly for us, uh, Neophytes. So- What were those platforms you just mentioned? No. Where you, can, where you can have limited edition? Known Origin. Known Origins. Yeah, that's one. Uh, and- Nifty Gateway. Nifty Gateway. And if you don't understand crypto too much, Nifty Gateway actually lets you buy with your credit card in dollar cents. Mm -hmm. So that makes it even more simple. But you can also use the NFT as a, the certificate. You can use it both ways. You can either sell your print, one in five edition, or whatever the amount, and have an NFT, one in one of that NFT. Uh, or you can have an edition of NFTs and promise the collector you'll send them a print if they want. A lot of people don't even want the print. Are They're they able to download a high resolution? Off only the size of the image you upload. That's sure. as far as they could download if they want to. Uh, but believe me, most of these people, they just rather be on the digital, working on the digital side and not bother with prints. But theoretically they could print it and you know, frame it, put it up. Yeah, but that's, hang it in their <laughs> they wouldn't make, it's like having, it's like, again, it's like having a poster of the Mona Lisa. It's right. not the real thing. Right. The well, real thing. a photograph, right, a, a painting, sure, <coughs> but a photograph, well. Low resolution and you have that, you bump into that anyway. Yeah. But so so the so the NFT is really a low resolution in can be. a file. That's up to you. It's just and a safeguard. Okay. The certificate of authenticity. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Sure. Yeah. 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 It's got nothing to do with art. Okay. This has to do with collecting. Yes. Okay. Collecting cars, records, doesn't matter what it is. Sure. Stocks. Right. Stocks. It feels to me like buying a stock. Yeah, like this kind of case. I mean, yes. owning the yeah. TV is no more interesting than owning a stock in some company. I mean, exactly right. I don't want to look at this. And there's some people. So <laughs> we have other images of things that are interesting. That's a good, really good point. And largely the same sort of thing with collecting art in general. There are those who collect it largely as a commodity. If they don't even look at it. It'll go into a vault. It, it, Maybe they'll hire it, it, someone to make it. This is all about it. profit and loss. No, no, that's no, what, that's no, what's not all of it. Right now, there's a big push on it because of the <coughs> cryptocurrency craze, but no, by no stretch and by no means is it. There's a lot of noise around it right now because of, you remember six, eight years ago, it was in the news that people would go, oh my goodness, this piece of art just sold for X amount of money. Oh, you want it, little Jeffrey or Nancy or whomever, you want to be an artist? That might not be a bad idea. You know, it's that same continuation to an extent. And with the ramp up of the market, there's so many, so many people who have so much more money than they used to. And what do you do with it? How are you gonna diversify your portfolio? All that technical stuff. But what it comes down to, no. Can you like forward the, the images so they can well, see? Yeah. I you finish excuse, your question. excuse me, I don't think you finished <laughs> answering, <laughs> answering this gentleman's <laughs> questions and all of them interested well, me. Yes, same as Can we go back to, I don't know question. your name. Oh, okay. Well, I think we were, Did you get I, I think we answered, yeah, no, I think we, you, you and answered pretty and much. We'll uh, put uh, websites up at the end. Okay, awesome. Easy, easy, yeah. easy. That's again, so I started with a big thing is. <laughs> but in terms of your, artists, we your work, you yeah. decide what you want to do with it. You decide if you right. want to sh 
send the collector the print and use the NFT only as a certificate, digital certificate of authenticity, meaning that with that print, if that print gets damaged, maybe that collector can tell you, hey, I bought one of your works, the print is damaged, can I get another one? They cannot print it from the file, unless it's a smaller <coughs> uh, version of it. But okay. even, either okay. way, okay. Uh, it's the NFT itself. Uh, one artist that I, I uh, we like to talk about a lot, at, uh, that I guess ties all this together is Sol DeWitt's work. Mm -hmm. okay. His, uh, his uh, certificates are the works of art in themselves and they can be infinitely reproduced. Uh, and the work on the wall is could be done by anybody, but it's the certificate itself which holds the value uh, and the instructions of how the work should be. And Almost this like is the more or less. Composition. Huh? Yeah. Almost like a musical composition. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Mass Mocha has an entire uh -huh. yes. wing of, of, uh -huh. of his work, and it was done by students who came exactly. in and created it. it was so I think, as an artist, I see I see NFTs as something disruptive, like uh, oil uh, in a tube. What happened then with expressionists going and painting in plein air, mm -hmm. being able to go outside the studio, and what that brought to art, like the camera. It in society in general, it, we all have one now in our pockets with our phones, or the Sony uh, uh, video yeah, camera, yeah, the, yeah, the quarter pack, which launched even a new uh, medium in art. It's called uh, uh, new media art uh, or video art. So all of this is uh, another tool in the toolbox for artists to work with, and like the gentleman over here said, also <coughs> have uh, income uh, to keep making more work to sustain your practice. Mm -hmm. Another example is you know, acrylic paints. A lot of artists would then, for a while, rejected them, mm -hmm. and we still have an, a stigma associated with it. But that's not real art, it's not made of oils. Or using technology, a friend of mine paints murals, he'll use a projector to project onto the wall and then fills it in. That's frowned upon. He hides that fact. He does it late at night, makes sure no one knows about it. <laughs> Someone else who uses a photograph to paint portraits, and then uses a very distinct grid system, you know, the grid system, to transfer rather than another friend who's a purist and says, no, I don't use a photograph. You have to sit for six hours still, and I'm going to paint you because of the stigma associated with it. And then as a result, he did not charge an obscene amount of money. And, and I wanted to add this, and I know you're yeah, trying to ask, ask a question. question, but just to say something, it doesn't always have to be a digital work. I can take a photo of my paintings and I can sell that as well. The only thing that, NF well not the only thing, but the NFT could serve both as a certificate or the work itself. So it's very practical in that sense. So yes, I understand some, you know, it sounds more like stocks uh, and the utility of it, of it and all that could be kind of put, puts people off. But as an artist, I, I want to just, you know, look at the, Utility for us as artists, right. you know, like a tool right. in the toolbox. I, I'm seeing it as, for an artist, another way of making income. Yes. Income and even oftentimes the idea of And just reputation. Yes. Getting the work out there. And jumping so over the gallery and, system. And a totally which is, separate thing is why would you buy it? It's like two different And mindsets. musicians have, the heads, have a step ahead of us on this, and that they're used to. So it used to be, here's my album sale, and I would get a small amount of it. Now you can publish something from your garage or from your basement or where it is you make music and then sell it to Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, any of these types of things. And every time someone plays it, you get a tiny little bit of money from it. So they're already used to this kind the of residual. Yeah. residual and interaction that I think a lot of us are still coming to terms with. And people that are just outside of it are going, by all means. Do as many things as you can to get it out there. Do all, as many different platforms, figure out like right now, minting cost is low, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, did, yeah. did the lady for the question, she, was, she wanted to uh, ask. Yes, yeah. I wanted to ask a question piggybacking off the income discussion. Yeah. There, uh, 60 Minutes and Time Magazine wrote an article about a 12 year old, her name is Nyla Hayes. Mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. her. And some of you may or may yeah. not have heard she of her. And she created images like this, visual art, 
and calling long necks. Mm -hmm. And she made almost $4 million. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're talking real income now. Sure. And I'm, I'm interested in how she got from there to there. Um, the $4 million was offered by? It doesn't matter what she... But there's a lot of celebrities. There's a lot of stuff about her. Her name is Nyla NYLA, H-A-Y-E-S, -E and she did these long necks. I think it's like who, who she's talking And her talking mother to her. became kind of familiar with, with her work or whatever and it ended up um, with her being this deal for me. So I'm, I'm interested, I understand about collecting and all of that, but if you have a digital art image like the one that you had up there or what this young girl has, and you end up um, with it being in a, uh, an auction and you end up with $4 million, getting back to whether you have it uh, protected, in what way. I'm interested in knowing what that protection is. Like, you know, like my husband was just asking, asking and how the steps are that get you to that point of actually being able to sell it okay. with that kind of reward. So, quick down and dirty. Like that. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you're not I mean, trying to collect it, you really are yeah. trying to, like this gentleman was talking about his photography, trying to increase the in your income with something creative that you've done. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm not saying luck has to do with it, but there are many projects that are not profitable at all, mm -hmm. and from every maybe a hundred, maybe one. Mm -hmm. So that could have been the case. Or 10,000. Or yeah, more, yeah, exactly. Right. So uh, you just never know, but if you put, I guess if you put some thought into your project and you try to create this whole, you know, like um, world around it, right? Like uh, what would this, mean for me as a collector if I own one of these works, right? What could I get out of it? Is there a marketing vehicle? Yes, there is. There are some roadmaps, but n this is still so new. You can still create your own. <coughs> maybe, maybe we can go back to the Moonbirds as an example there. This is similar to uh, the apes, but a bit more, I guess, appealing. This is kind of like the same idea as well create a lot of the same thing. And then if you buy this, you're not only buying the work, but you're buying into a community, which is important. This community, maybe they all uh, chat in a group together and they exchange ideas. Maybe they even meet in person at some points and this is your past to go into certain events. Or maybe you're promising of uh, creating a a, a game or some kind of metaverse space so that if you have ownership of this uh, NFT you can access these spaces. So uh, projects like that, uh, <clears throat> not only the visual uh, give way to you know you being interested in it, but also the utility of it is, and the community behind it as well. And yeah, I've heard many stories similar to this. There's even something even more random that this uh, kid in India was taking photos of his face standing in front of the computer uh, for an entire year when he was taking classes online. And he's had the, like, the most bored face. Like he was just like, oh, another day in school. And he took a photo, screenshot of his face. And after a whole year, he minted all of these and he made like a million dollars out of this Millions. stuff. And he was afraid to tell his parents because, you know, like, where did he get all that money? He, he didn't know how to explain to them. So that not always is there, you know, like, a big, important project behind it. Sometimes the idea itself and the context of it, right, can help you push your project through and gain, you know, significant uh, numbers from it. But those projects, I recommend you actually looking at the ones that are most profitable in that sense and see, try to figure out what made them profitable. But almost all of them, what they have in common is community. How you manage to pull people in and hold them and keep them interested in your project. Like a pet rock. It, it sounds so antithetical to art. Yeah, this is not, right. this is not art in itself. Yeah, there is, it's just a wide market Anything can fall into it, but there is art in it. Like I said, it's a tool for artists, right. but not everything you see in the space 
it's art in itself. Yeah. So and that's why you have to do research and understand what you're buying. Mm -hmm. And it's new enough that there are creative applications for it. I mean, something that we don't really hear much, but is an idea that a few people have been throwing around, which is if there's an object in a museum and the museum wants to acquire it, one of the ways of creatively funding it and also creating community around it mm -hmm. is selling NFTs of the object. I mean, if you, if you had friends in town, you showed them a picture and said, hey, you want to go see this thing? I own this thing. We're part of this thing. It's like a company or something like that. But can also then, people can create, artists can creatively use it with the, almost as the model of, um, you know, Chris, Christo? Yeah. Christo? Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing. Rather than selling individual photographs or images or sketches to fund the big project, you could use NFTs. And everybody knows it's my car. Exactly. <laughs> Say you want to do a one on a piece of my car. You could do it. <laughs> and if you did that and people went, wow, that's a really cool yellow Porsche or whatever your thing is. I'm exactly right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Where it, if there's that buzz, if there's that curiosity, then it just keeps going. Yeah. yeah. But but what you were saying. Um, <laughs> I, I got, what got me into NFTs, it was just really yeah. on, on the internet, and I was on Instagram and I followed Gary V. you know, I followed mm -hmm. him for years and he started talking about this NFTs and that's where it just started the hearing. And then I saw this uh, one, it was uh, my phone, I think it's Earth Picks, it's called. Mm -hmm. And they started putting on this Moments in History, this NFT, we're going to be minting at this time, I'm like, oh, you know what? What, what's all about this? So this is the NFT that I own, one of them. Oh, that's great. But it's all about museums, too. So they're all about the history. So if you own this NFT, you get to go into their metaverse, that they're building a museum within the metaverse. And they do the same thing that you're saying with an artifact. So as a group, you're a community. We're in a Discord, so everyone who owns one or people that don't own one are welcome in there as well. But if you own one, like you said, you get that special ticket. Yeah, we get to get in the metaverse, the utility yeah. behind it. But they're really into, so like every week they'll have an archaeologist come and, and speak to the group on this, whether it's in Twitter or within the Discord. Yeah. So they're always giving you these different things, and it's something that you're interested. They do trivia, history trivia. You can earn, um, you know, ETH or different types of crypto in there too. So they keep the community going. So you're meeting people from all over the country within that platform with that. But it's it was just so interesting. Like when you said that, they even had a. a Things that you could win, um, pictures like that, a picture of Elvis Presley and um, yeah. Priscilla that you can do this. So you're winning artifacts as well that were in hand too. And with the t-shirts, they had a company they worked with, a t-shirt, they would do a percentage. I bought my sister her first NFT and then I put it in a canvas for her birthday. So I gave it to her because everyone's like, well, it's what, you, what, you're just buying a picture or whatever. So I wanted it like that, you know, physical aspect for her too. My nephew is, is really the, the artist, you know, so he does acrylics and all that, so cool. trying to get him in. My friend's daughter, she actually sells NFTs, so she's been um, rocking it, a six-year-old graded NFT, so, so yeah. yeah. But it was I mean, exactly is, what you said. I mean, it's, it's applying a creative angle or an idea, and this is a way to sell so it. So when the six-year-old is 65, <laughs> I'll be in business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Hopefully this helps we'll us to get there sooner than... She mentioned Discord, which is an online forum for anyone who doesn't know what that is. It's, a, it's like Twitter, sort of, uh, but you can get more in depth. You're not limited to 250 characters or whatever it is. But it's, it's an online website and area that you can use to access to talk about all this yeah. stuff. It's and I didn't online. know any about this, and it was very overwhelming, to be honest with you. I, I wasn't even on Twitter before that, so it was just like, okay, if I want to learn about this, I watched YouTube videos over and over, and I just jumped in. So I just got on Twitter, I'm like, okay, so everything I do on Twitter is really NFT organized, you know. And then the and Discord, I just had to really kind of play. I lost some money. I clicked on certain things when it comes to your wallet and stuff, but it's like, learning how to, so you lose a little bit to learn, but sure. um, it's definitely helped, but you just yeah. gotta jump in and go for yeah, it. I had a friend that was, uh, when we started, because we started more or less the same time, and um, when you do a transaction, it takes a while for it to reflect, and he didn't know that, and he just kept on mm -hmm. hitting the button, and when it came through, they, they every time he clicked on 
the buy button. You just bought it over, <laughs> over and over again. So you have to be very careful and patient because there is a lot of uh, information, right? Transactions happening at the same time, and it's still very, you know, a uh, young system in a way. It hasn't fully grown like a, I don't know, like a, a transaction with your visa that it'll, it happen almost instantly. This, uh, it needs to make the block, which is what the blockchain does, and that takes usually a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes, maybe even an hour or so at times, depending on the traffic. So yeah, you do lose some, but you can take it as you know a lesson. That was a great lesson yeah, for me. And then, so you and then I just passed it on to, you know, yeah. I'm like, okay, let's just do it. And that's together. the same thing again of being able to pass on the information and the same thing for all of us to be in the community to say, yeah. hey, what's your experience with such and such? Yes, Jessica. Well, maybe. so you were referencing um, musicians getting money every time they a music a song gets downloaded or something. Is there a way for an artist to when to when there's a sale of that item to get some portion of that? Or yes, is there, no way, yes, there is a way to have that. That is the most important yeah. thing yeah. because Ezra was saying that example of you first selling it for 100 and then you for 400 and then you making the big bucks, right? Well, every time you make a sale, the original artist gets 10% of that sale, no matter how much or how far into the future that work is resolving it. You always get uh, You're saying that that's royalty. the established practice? That's the yeah. normal. That's the minimum, actually, right. right now. You can ask for more, uh -huh. but 10% is attractive number for everybody to agree upon mm -hmm. and say, okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. And every time I sell the work, I understand that 10% of that sale won't go to me, it will go to the artist, and it'll help the artist. So, I mean, artists that uh, nowadays sell a painting, then, then they sell it for $1,000 maybe, and then 20 years from now, somebody sells it in an auction or somewhere for a huge amount of money. I'll never see that. Uh, I'll never see royalties from it. Yeah, so in a way you are, as a collector, I think you best see it as you're helping the artist and along the way there will also be uh, royalties that yeah. will keep on helping the artist as the price of their work estimates as well. And that's enforceable because of the way the sales It's are automatic. Yeah. It's embedded in, in the contract and it just happens. You don't have to do anything. Then one day you wake up and then you have money in your wallet. They were saying that the most attractive for the artists now, that's why all artists get dead. Finally, they get paid by paying a transaction. Yeah. Like compared to history, they never get paid if you're, you know, painting was resolved, just like you mentioned. And like, that is what has us all, you know, like, giddy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right now. It's like, finally. Yes. You had a question? Oh, you had a question. But there's no, sorry, there's no protection against, say, somebody taking that low resolution image, printing little ones, and setting up at an art fair with a tent and selling those prints, right? It's, it's, I was it's at a dentist's like office else. in New Mexico one time and, and I recognized a picture and I said, wait a minute, I know that photograph. I contacted the photographer and they said, yeah, I know. Someone came and took a picture of it and then had someone else in China paint exactly that picture yeah. and now it hangs in the dentist's office and there's nothing I can do about it. Mm -hmm. So that kind of thing, and that was 15 years ago, so that kind of thing is always going to be there to some right. extent, yeah. but it's certainly better than, I mean if you're giving a medium or low resolution picture with the NFT, knowing that it's never going to be on a screen bigger than a, mm -hmm. probably than a 4K screen, or if you want to keep the resolution low, that's fine. And if you want, again, this idea that you, you can either give a print of the work to the initial buyer, and they can either keep it or they can pass it all along, that's up to you, 100%. And then the other question I have, too, yeah. is like, is this like a, almost like a social aspect where you have to or are encouraged to interact with your community, with your collectors? Oftentimes, they don't even know who you are. Yeah. They may know you by a pseudonym. In terms of security, it's easy enough to then figure out you know, who, what other transaction that identity has made. But there are a lot of people who are prominent characters in this whole space. No one knows who they are. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. You know yeah, you, you decide. I guess you can be as anonymous as you want, not, not even be on Twitter or Discord or anything. 
or you can be as interactive as you want. Of course, the more interactions you have, the better uh, uh, percentage you have of. So really, Twitter is really the main social media platform right now. Twitter and, and Discord, yeah. yeah. Those are the two uh, major um, centers, you could say. Um, For instance, the, both of us, our handles are our names so that people can go, oh, this is a work by Ezra Hubbard, or this is, you know, this is he, rather than, eh, I don't know who or what this is. Mm -hmm. You know, because there is coming from a traditional art background. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I have an important question. Yes. <laughs> this is important. A bunch of people in the room, you guys know your stuff, and a couple other people may know your stuff. And a lot of words, talk, Bitcoin, this, that, 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 that. I'm saying, what the? Anyway. Um, <laughs> Are there, say, I'm a fine artist. I am a fine artist. <laughs> I'd ask anyone. Well, anyway, um, and I sell work. Work gets hung on a wall. Somebody gives me some money. And right. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> say I want to get into NFTs. Okay. Are there consultants? Are there people you can go to? Say, how do I do that? I mean, I know how to make a picture. I know how to put it on. A computer, sell it, whatever. But if I want to get in, are there people who get a fee to come and say, okay, this is what you got to do. You got to take this, do this, do this res, put it up here, get on Twitter, bada bing, bada bang. Yeah, yeah well, we'll I'm sure there are, but at this point, have, it's like, hey, one of us, you call can us and ask us. Yeah. Or ask Renee or ask anybody in the room. Because that's part of, again, for me, it's so important for artists to be able to support other artists. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think. Sure. Uh, yeah. At the moment, yeah. like art consultants, kind of, uh, yeah. other than Sotheby's and Christie's that I, outside of those, I don't know of any. I saw that. some on Fiverr. I don't know if you've ever been on Fiverr. Yeah. So, oh. and you can look and they do everything from marketing. They even have like artists. If you're not an artist, they have artists that will even put it together for you. Yeah. I've never really been on it, but I know that uh, I've seen that, you know, that they do all of that. So I've never looked for yeah. it. So, but, but in, in, like, for example, what I mentioned, community. So for, let's say you have a question and you are on Twitter and you just ask and a lot, you'll be surprised how many people will respond. respond yes. a lot on Twitter. And a lot of the images- I wasn't until recently. <laughs> a lot of those images are not sort of, can't be low resolution, boring things. There are things that are interesting conceptually. Like this artist saw on Google Translate how strange it is. This is called Lost in Translation. That in Spanish, Billion translated into English is trillion. That's weird, yeah. but that's a normal occurrence. Yeah. So the artist said, actually, this is an interesting conceptual piece. I'm going to turn this into an NFT. And that works. There was a, another artist who did a, um, he put his proof of vaccination card <laughs> as an NFT. So it, it gets in, you can get into conceptual art with it, which to me is much more exciting and interesting than the current craze of some of these other things. Um, here are websites. You know, we're getting towards that point. I'm going to give you guys a moment to be able to write stuff down. And do feel free to reach out. I have, I have a question. Yes. For like for my nephew, he he's you know he does the, the painting and all of that. And someone had asked, can you just take a picture of that and then upload it? Do you 100%. recommend to do that better, or do you recommend to for him to kind of go into the digital as aspect? You don't have to. Okay. I just didn't know which one like people would. The greatest pieces of advice I was given by a much older artist was do what interests you. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. You know? Yeah. I talked to friends who were like, wow, should I be sketching on the iPad? They're like, you know what? No, pick up a pencil, put it on the page. That tactile sensation of the sound of a right. pencil moving across the page, what it did, the way it moves. And then other artists are like, no, you've got your iPad in your bag, pull it out and use right. it. All the time, right. everywhere, anywhere, you have color. You don't have that. So it's, again, it's Perfect. your interest. Yeah. Follow. For, for some medium, like photography, for example, it's easier to understand going into the, because it's already digital. But it could be analog and still work. The only aspect, the only part that, that needs to be digital is some kind of, like I said, the word token, something that represents that it, it has to be digital because you're going to upload it online, but that's the only reason why it needs to be digital. It could be a painting, it could be even a sculpture. 
and maybe you just do a video of the sculpture, you know, running around at 360 in the endless loop, and then upload that, and then that could be the work. And, and you guys do your sculpture, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you have yours on NFTs as well? I, I've got a bunch of stuff that's in development that's going to probably launch in the next week or two. Okay. Except she's going to drop. Right. Yeah, you're going to drop. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's also this. Uh, the weird thing of the industry. Yeah, I'm trying to get in. Yeah, keep up. Yeah, 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 Right. Any other thoughts, questions? WTF. Yeah. Good. I know, but that's good. That's good. More questions. Because it is such an interesting time historically. There is so much changing and happening right now. And a lot of this is going to be through artists and people who are thinking outside the box. You know, we're the ones who are going to push the creative edge. And it's, it's not yet to the point where, remember in grad school, where a group of us met at. Uh, like the Apple screensaver that was stuffed in there. I went, man, that is so obnoxious. I've been making that stuff for like five years and nothing has happened with it and here it is already marketed as a thing. And he scratched his head and he looked at me and said, yeah, Apple can afford to buy the best artists. Mm -hmm. So until that happens, right now we're in an environment where the stuff that we do is what really sets the stage for how it proceeds. You know, and when we come up with a weird, whacked out idea, we can integrate that on a level that we couldn't 10 years ago. So it's really exciting. It's really exciting. Really Do you think this industry is going to be like hitting it going much more than it is today? I think it has to. Yeah. I think it has already generated so much interest in the weird cultural phenomena, phenomena of these obnoxious little images, but they work. And again, they create that sense of community. You know, anyone who's been, there's that, and then there's also the secondary, and tertiary waves of influence. Like we're all in here talking about NFTs. People have been talking about NFTs for a few years and we're in a time when culture, cultural fads are faster moving than they ever have been in history. But the fact that it's two years later and we're still talking about it, that says a lot. Yeah. The secondary and tertiary markets as they move forward, other people, I mean a friend just recently who I don't think she's even barely touched a computer, barely knows how to use her phone, is saying, I want to start buying crypto. Why? Me? I'm going, this is probably not the best time, but it's still being traded, it's still an active thing. So it doesn't matter. You know, and, and people, I have a background in the film industry, and one of the things that we would talk about is, at what point do different markets become active? How do they become active? And we're nowhere near those other markets. Yeah. By the so way, I think, yes. You know exactly. anyone blogging about NFTs, like NFT the dummy? There are things like that. Do you have recommendations? There's one NFTs for newbies. No, I guess you can. I mean, okay. yeah, if you do a search, you'll find many articles that can help you. Uh, and. Our websites are there, my email and Ezra's email is there. I mean, I'm more than happy to you know, answer any questions as well.